not very easy for all of us to just love ourselves suddenly. <sighs> Who do I see? For the rest of your life, the only person that you're gonna be stuck with from beginning to end is yourself, so you might as well like that person. Whatever you were gonna do, girl, do it anyway. Okay, this is weird. Let's start with an easy question. Why am I so nervous? This is, okay, just answer the question, no big deal. First question, what was your first memory of life? So when we were growing up, we had a lot of dogs in the house. We had a lot of animals. Okay, this is so weird, guys. You really got me here. But grew up in the house with a lot of animals. And one of my earliest memories is like playing with them. And I remember like chasing it under a chair. So yeah, that's one of my first memories of life. Chasing dogs underneath a chair. Let me go to another deep question. What was the most challenging moment you went through in your career? One you thought you couldn't make it. anything big is always a challenge. I remember when I was working with MTV very closely, we would go back and forth between Malaysia, often because we were hosting this big event there called World Stage Live in Malaysia. Um, and there were different types of musicians. We had international artists and local artists. And we had fans um, with crowds as big as 30,000 people. And I would host them along with my co-host, Alan. And before I did that, I had never really been on a stage. I didn't have that much performance history or training at all. When I joined MTV, I was pretty much a newbie and I learned everything on the job. So I remember like having to be talked to and encouraged and coached um, from my first onstage hosting experience to a crowd that big. And I remember that was a challenge for me because I don't think anything will ever prepare anyone for the first time they walk out to a sea of people. And in terms of one that I thought I couldn't make it, I just thought that if anything happened on stage, like if I fell or if I froze or I forgot my lines or I didn't know what to do, that's something I didn't know if I could recover from. So yeah, that's definitely one of the books. Wow, I haven't thought about that memory in a long time. That's a, that's a good question. Choose no internet or no bath for a month. Obviously no internet, no, I'm joking. No bath for a month. Yeah. Easy. Okay, let's go for another funny one. Give one criticism that you received that you find funny. I remember when I was in high school, I experienced online bullying, good old social media, and at the time, on Facebook, there were these apps. It was horrible for everyone at the time because what it did was it allowed people to anonymously send you messages into your inbox. And at the same time on the app, there was like um, like a social ranking. I don't know, maybe some of you guys remember this, but it was sort of like a hot or not. And people would just vote for people and then it created like this hierarchy. And it was really, really toxic. I don't know if this still happens, but it was really toxic at the time. I remember one criticism that I received that I, find, I found funny and I still find funny. And this person was like, ew. She looks like an alien with her huge eyes and big forehead gross. And I just find it hilarious because aliens are fucking awesome. Like I actually have a tattoo alien somewhere on my body. <laughs> and um, yeah, I thought it was a compliment. Like, dude, aliens are so cool. Why wouldn't I want to look like one? And plus it kind of became like a weird high, like modeling uh, beauty standard to have like the big forehead and the big eyes. So aliens are hot. Thank you to that person. <laughs> this next question is, who do you see when you look at the mirror? Um, who do I see? I see someone that I dig, and 
I'm not trying to say that to sound like vain or arrogant or big headed, but I have gotten to a point where I've worked really hard to, to truly like myself. I don't have to love myself yet because I don't think that telling people to go love themselves is very helpful. It's not very easy for all of us to just love ourselves suddenly, but to get to a point where you really like yourself, I think I'm there. And the reason that is, is because I've always made a huge effort to get to a point where when I woke up in the morning, I was just comfortable with where I'm at. And I remember a long time ago, one of the earliest quotes that always stood out to me when I started my journey in this media industry was that for the rest of your life, the only person that you're gonna be stuck with from beginning to end is yourself. So you might as well like that person. So I look at this person in the mirror and I see someone who looks after her health, she looks after her family, she really gives a shit about the people she cares about. She makes an effort and she is kind to herself, she's compassionate and she's done the work. And so here we are and I like it. Yeah, I like this alien. What is something that you've done that you're most proud of? Starting my podcast, that's something that I'm really proud that I did. Um, growing up, you know, I've always felt a little different from people. I mean, I grew up in an Asian society and I'm a mixed race kid, so I also felt like I stood out in that aspect because growing up in Singapore, unless I saw some people on TV, it wasn't that common to see people who look like me. So, you know, representation, it matters, right? So growing up, I kind of felt like I stuck out a little bit. And now with my podcast, I can share who I am and find people who share my feelings and my thoughts. And it helps me understand that I'm not alone, that we're all weird. And it sort of like heals that inner child of mine that, yeah, you've got some crazy thoughts, you've got some loud opinions, you're a little kooky, but other people out there are too, and it's fine. Like we're, we're kind of all of this together. It, go, going through the industry as a host, and I would spend a lot of time hosting and talking about subjects that weren't necessarily my own. Um, I remember when I was in radio, I would come home after a long stint, and I would be so exhausted, I would be so drained. And it wasn't that I didn't enjoy the job, it was that the topics that I was talking about on the job didn't give me joy anymore. There was only so much I could talk about, like the hits or celebrity life. Yeah, to really notice my energy levels. I, I remember thinking to myself, like, what are you doing? You're a great host, you're a great presenter. This is what you do. You should be putting your talents behind something you care about. And so starting this podcast for me was a little avenue to do that, to put it towards something that is authentic to who I am and can help people. And yeah, be a little entertaining at the same time. So my podcast, it's called Just So We're Clear. Check it out. Okay, next one. Ooh, you guys want some gossip. Okay, give a scenario where you got so pissed off with your co-artist at work. Here's the thing. <laughs> if I am pissed off with a co-artist or a co-talent at work, I will always remain professional. Whatever you're bringing into the room, whatever energy you bring in, affects everyone around you. So if I'm pissed off with an artist at work, I try not to let it affect other people, um, and then I try to deal with it outside. But to be honest, I haven't had many situations where I've been like pissed off with people that I work with. I feel like everyone that I've worked with has been really fun and easy. So yeah, let's go with a light one, and then we'll end it with a deep one. Hmm, in your opinion, which is the best generation? This is hard. Like, I want to say ours, <laughs> but I'm also a bit of an old soul, so I do love, like, the older, older generation. And hear me out, okay? I think the generation that grew up in, like, the 70s, I think that they had a stronger grasp on what it meant to be adventurous. Because back then, when you traveled, you didn't have like Instagram or Google Maps. It seemed like they were very much in the present because these days we're always taking photos, we're always like Instagramming, we're always doing stories to, to share where we are. Nothing's really private. So I think they had it good in terms of privacy and just living for yourself and being present and having adventures. But in terms of our generation, I think that we're the best because we are just dealing with so much 
much fucking shit all the time. Yeah, I got a little bit emotional there. We've got global warming to deal with. We've got the stupid pandemic. Being young in a pandemic right now, I don't even know how Gen Z's are doing it, but hats off to you guys. We've got just so much to worry about in terms of the outside world. And then now because of information, like we're becoming more woke as ever. So I think in terms of how much we have on our plate, we're doing pretty well. So we are resilient as hell. There's no playbook on how to survive. The fact that we are surviving, go us. Okay, my little rant over. What advice do you wish to give to your younger self? <laughs> my younger self. Girl, whatever you're gonna do, like, do it anyway. Younger me was the most stubborn person ever because whatever she wanted, whatever I wanted, I would go out to get. I was unapologetic. Like the audacity that I had back then, the amount of zero bucks that I portrayed, I admire. I was a risk taker and I love that. So young Henley, whatever you were gonna do, girl, do it anyway. Okay, I think I'm done. <sighs> that was good. I mean, it was kind of weird, but it was good, guys. It was good. I like this format. <laughs>